Hi, so in my last video I showed you a time lapse and some tips on hard surface modeling. If you haven't seen it yet, you might want to check it out. The link is up in the info card and of course in the description. This video was very well received and I got several requests on YouTube and in various Facebook groups about how to do UV mapping and create all those labels by hand. So in this video I will show you that process. First, we need to get a good understanding of UV maps. When working in 3D space, we know that our model consists of vertices, edges and planes. And those planes can be inside one or more UV maps. What is that? When we apply textures to our 3D model, we usually want to use images like JPEGs, PNGs, TIFFs and so on. We have cameras which take 2D images. We have software to create and edit 2D images. 2D images are everywhere, so naturally 2D images are a great basis for textures, even for 3D objects. But they're not 3D. How do we put a 2D image onto a 3D object? That requires some sort of projection. An easy way to get a texture onto an object in Blender is to use the generated texture coordinates, which basically just wraps the image around somehow. This can be fine for some things, but usually we want more control. We want to be in charge of what part of the 2D image should go where on the 3D model. And that is exactly what a UV map does. While X, Y and Z are the 3D coordinates, U and V are the texture coordinates in two dimensions. So we have to somehow flatten our 3D object onto a 2D plane. Let's take a cube for example. When we look at the 3D cube, we first have to cut it open and we always do that along the edges. So we pick the edges we want to cut. Let's call those edges seams, like the seams on your jeans where two pieces of cloth are being sewn together. Let's cut these three edges and fold that down. Now let's cut here and here and flip that back. Now we cut those two edges and fold those three faces down. Imagine that you print this shape onto a piece of paper, cut it out and fold it up and you get a three-dimensional cube. That's how we flatten a 3D object and this process is called UV unwrapping. Let's take the cube example and see how it's done manually in Blender. Here we have the cube. Down here I loaded a simple 2D image. Now we need to pick the edges we want to cut open. Remember they're called seams. Let's start with these three so that the face can fold down. Then we also take those two. We can imagine that we can now flip that part back. But we also need to cut here and here so that the sides can fold down. Now we go to this menu and hit mark seam. Blender shows seams in a different color in edit mode so we can see them easily. Now all we have to do is tell Blender to unwrap this. Still in edit mode, we select all faces hit U and select Unwrap. And look at that, this is our UV map, a two-dimensional representation of the 3D cube. Over here in the Data tab, we can see that this object now has one UV map assigned to it. I rename it to UV Labels. So one object can even have multiple UV maps. We can use this UV map now in the cube's material. I take an Image Texture node and select the image, I take a UV map node, select the UV labels map and use it to map the image onto the cube. Now this is what the cube looks like when I switch to show materials. When I select a face in edit mode, I can also see where that face is on the UV map. And whatever is in the image right here gets mapped onto the cube right here. The UV map editor has many editing features on its own. You can select vertices, edges, faces and islands move them with G, rotate them with R, scale them with S. And you notice how that changes the projected texture on the 3D object. This becomes really obvious when I move a single vertex of the UV map. Notice how the texture is now distorted on the according plane on the cube. The cube is a very simple example, but you can unwrap basically any 3D object one way or another. Here are a few examples of default UV maps of Blender's primitives. If you know exactly what UV map you want, this is how you do it manually. 
Blender also comes with some UV mapping features that can speed up the entire process. Here I create a cylinder. I do not mark any edges as seams, but simply choose the Smart UV Project option. And Blender creates this UV map for me. Setting a different angle limit, I get this. There are other options here that you can always play with to find a good starting point. One UV mapping feature I used for several things in the audio recorder model is Project From View, which does exactly what it says. It projects the current view into the UV map. For example, I turn the viewport to look straight onto a surface of the model. In edit mode, I select only the faces I want to unwrap, choose Project From View, and get a usable UV map. Let me mention a few things here to help you get a good understanding of UV maps. Like I said before, the UV map is all about the planes of our model, which means that one plane of the 3D mesh is one plane in the UV map. But one vertex or edge of the mesh can have multiple representations in the UV map. These two faces of the cube share these two vertices and this edge. But in the UV map, this vertex is represented at this location and this location. And this edge is also represented at this location and this location. Another thing to realize is that the faces in the UV map can overlap each other. I can move these UVs to be in a similar location than those other UVs, which just means that we get the same section of the texture on both faces. The UV map is a projection of faces onto a 2D image, like a JPEG. So if you want to really zoom in on your object, make sure the resolution of the texture you use is high enough. Now let's actually put something onto this cube. Let's make it into a die for gambling. So our goal is to create an image in our photo editor of choice, draw on the spots of the die and bring it back to Blender. But how do we know where exactly to put those spots? Or referencing back to my video about the Zoom audio recorder, where do we have to place the labels in 2D so that they fit onto the 3D object exactly? Luckily, Blender has a cool feature for that. All we have to do is select UVs, export UV layout, save that somewhere and open it in Photoshop. The UV map is now outlined on a layer and I can paint or type whatever I want onto new layers. Before I save, I hide that UV info layer, save it to a new file, now open that new file in Blender in the material. And we have everything showing up at the right location. In the other video, however, I did not use the colors of the images because I want to control the colors and all other properties of the material in Blender. First, let me create the two materials. Let's make the dye a shiny white color. And let's say we want the spots to be a matte dark brown. So I can mix those two materials together with a mix shader node. And now I need a mix factor. There are several ways to do this. But what I did in the video was this. I simply left a transparent background, saved that as a PNG, and used the alpha channel of the image as the mix factor. This is the same as, for example, here on the back of the audio recorder, where the surface is this rubbery black material and the labels have a light gray material. And the alpha channel of the image drives the mix factor. Lastly, in the video, a few markings on the device are not printed labels, but rather indented or elevated. Instead of modeling such fine things, I decided to create bump maps for those. So let's create a bump map for our die. We simply use the same UV map and paint the bump map in the photo editor. Since, like I said before, a bump can either go inwards or outwards, the neutral middle of a bump map is 50% gray. Everything darker than that gray will appear as indentations. Everything lighter than that gray will appear elevated. So I make a new layer, fill it with 50% gray and move it underneath the spots. I want the surface of the die to have dents where the spots are. And since I already painted those black, that now means that they are already set up to be indentations. Now something rather important for bump and displacement maps. You pretty much always want some degree of blur on those. I combine all spots into a smart object and apply a blur filter. 
So I get a gradient from the medium gray to the black, which means we will get soft edges here. Now let's save this image and let me show you why you should not use JPEG for this. JPEG has lossy compression and creates compression artifacts that are usually not visible to the human eye, but they are visible to Blender. So when I use this JPEG now for a bump map, you can see how horrible this looks. Instead, we will actually set this image to be 16-bit and then save it as a 16-bit PNG or TIFF if you like those better. Now when I load that image, we get nice looking soft indentations from our bump map. Just for fun, let's also add a logo on one side, but just in the bump map, not in the color map. I keep the logo white so it is elevated for demonstration purposes. Blur it a tiny little bit, save the image again, reload it in Blender, and here we go. Now you know exactly how I put all the labels and bump maps on the model of the audio recorder. To get the locations, sizes, fonts, symbols, and icons perfectly matched up, I added the reference photos as a layer behind the UV outlines. And since the 3D mesh was modeled after the same reference images, this fit together nicely and gave me an exact template for creating the maps. I hope this was useful and you learned something. If so, please give me a like, subscribe to my channel and share the video with others. Thanks for watching. See you soon.